So this is what we made. These are all the developed cyanotypes from our experience in this video. Uh, there are actually two missing. I'm using them to make contact prints outside. So we should have two more of these plant ones, but we don't because I'm currently using them. But they look similar to these. And let's just take a look because I want to explain a little bit about what we did. The first thing we did was make a La Mesa bench cyanotype, which is life size. It's exactly as big as when I was sitting there on the bench. So we basically took the emblem home with paper. And then I made another copy of this um, at a different bench. This was the one over at the park setting. And then this one was actually the one that we made that's two-sided. So you can see that dark side with the uh, you know palm tree background as well. Then we've got this thing, which is a bunch of acorns. And uh, whatever those little pricker balls are, I'm not sure what they are. But um, that's the top section. Those are all the big cyanotypes from this experience. Moving on, we now have an, uh, a pine cone and a branch. So we made that at the park. These are more of those tiny little pricker ball things. And now we have some cube type images. I think I like this one best because it's got... It's got kind of an inclusion. It looks like there's a separate cube within a cube and that cube has a cube cut out of it. So it's, it's cubey. And then I really like this emblem in general because it's such a strong white contrast. When you compare it, these are the same exact thing, but when you compare this one to that one, this one is a little bit more, I don't know what word to choose, but I like this one more. This one is more well-defined, let's say that. And then we have these other cyanotypes that we made of plants. So we just clipped on a plant. Uh, this was like a piece of milkweed that I found on the path when I was walking to make these cyanotypes. So I picked it up and brought it with me to when I sat down to make cyanotypes and then clipped it to a piece of paper with a binder clip. Same for this one. And these are more of the rhombus shapes that I made different stair-stepping cubes from. And that's it. We've done all these cyanotypes using all that paper we made earlier, and it probably took an hour's worth of effort to get this material ready to use, and then as much time as it took when I was sitting around making the cyanotypes in the sunlight for them to be developed or uh, printed, exposed, and then it took some water to develop them, as you saw, but the result is art that you can hang on your wall, give it to a friend, do whatever you want with. I, I don't know who these are going to go to. I bet some of them will be used to make envelopes because I send out the four by six size of cyanotype paper in uh, existing cyanotypes that I just don't know what to do with. So it's possible if you buy something from light print paper, you will receive one of these cyanotypes in a cut up form as an envelope. That's it. And if you make cyanotypes, go and do it. There is no perfect cyanotype. There is no, I hope it will turn out this way. There's just seeing what happens. So my recommendation is if you're thinking about making a cyanotype and you have cyanotype paper in your hands, just try something. Anything is better than waiting and thinking you're going to do it wrong. You will always do it right because cyanotype is a very forgiving medium. Even when you create something that is so abstract, it's still a very striking color of blue and white. So you can't go wrong. You'll always have a good time when you make cyanotype art. And I hope this video had so much information that you were just like, I can't watch it all at once. Or if you did watch it all at once, thank you for enduring this.